The housing market showing no signs of opening up. Tight inventories driving prices higher again in August to a new record high. It's according to Case Shiller Home Price Index. Joining us now is Craig Lazara. He's S&P Dow Jones Indices Managing Director. So first off, Craig, just give us, a, give us the report. Craig, what are the highlights we need to know? Uh, Josh, I think there, there are two, two main things to say. One is that it was a strong report, as you, as you alluded. On a month-over-month -month basis, uh, the national composite was up uh, about 0.4 percent, which is, which is quite a strong uh, report. Uh, and this is the seventh consecutive month in which prices have increased. Um, the other thing that's important to note is that the, the report is fairly, the, the strength in the housing market is fairly broad. Uh, we, fought, we tracked 20 cities in addition to the national composites. Uh, on a seasonally adjusted basis, prices were up in 19 of the 20, and, if, and the one that missed was just by a whisker. Uh, so it, it was a strong market in terms of breadth, and a strong market in terms of, of level. And when you, um, it's Julie here, Craig, when you look at the different cities, mm -hmm. um, are they, or the different regions, are they equally weighted? How do you all think about that in the composition of this uh, index? Well, the, the, they're, they're weighted by, by the, the number of transactions that, that take place. But the, the interesting thing about the regions is to see how the, there's been a shift in, in the relative strength. I mean, if we go back two or three years, uh, Phoenix, Arizona was the strongest city for a run of about three years in a row. Uh, and Phoenix is now uh, actually trending uh, trending downward. The strongest city, uh, oh, the strongest metro area, I should say, uh, for the last four months uh, has been uh, Chicago, uh, followed by uh, followed by New York. Uh, so it's um, it's been a, uh, I referred to it a few months ago as the revenge of the Rust Belt. Uh, and that's really been uh, been what we've been noticing lately as, as prices in the, the Midwest and, and Northeast uh, have uh, have recovered uh, more than those in, in the West and, and South. And Craig, now, now that here's the point I asked you to bring out your crystal ball. So prices remaining elevated. What do you see ahead, Craig? Well, there, there are two uh, kind of countervailing things, Josh, both of which come from the, the presence of, of rising interest rates. The obvious thing to say uh, is that rising mortgage rates make it harder uh, to afford a, a, a given house with a given level of financing. So you would expect rising rates to uh, to suppress demand, and you would you would therefore expect that the rates that have, the rates that have risen so far this year would have led to weakness uh, in the market. In fact, we've seen we've seen the opposite. I think the explanation for that is because rates were so low for so long, people were able either to buy with very low mortgage rates or to refinance into very low rates, and so if someone wants to move now they're looking at increased financing costs and that has the effect of, of reducing the supply of available houses and net net it appears that at least for the time being the rise in mortgage rates has, has probably uh, diminished supply more than it's diminished demand right it's a very um tricky situation for a lot of folks right now craig um Everybody wants to know when it's going to change, right? <laughs> Which, if we could, if we all knew the answer to that question, well, we, we'd be doing pretty well. But I'm just wondering, really? historically, yeah, when you when you look at your other indices, you know, sort of looking at them against this one, is there anything that can help us as a leading indicator to help try to figure out when this might start to roll over? Uh not really, uh, and we've tried to do this mm. historically to model uh, S and P K Schiller to say, well, what other indices would would match up? And it, it's it's very difficult to do, which is which is a way of saying there really is unique information that's being uh, incorporated in, into housing prices. But speaking more broadly, I would say uh, that if there were a a true uh, signs of economic weakness, and, and I, I don't see many of them, I'm not an economist, but I don't see many of them. I mean, employment is doing well, uh, earnings are coming in uh, coming in okay, uh, but certainly there are any either of us could could think of any number of things that might that might be a shock to the economy and would push the economy into recession. If that were to happen, I would be surprised if housing prices held up. Uh, and, and if it is true that the increase in rates has had the effect of 
uh, suppressing supply more than demand, it's at least arguable that if rates uh, level out and mortgage rates level out and begin to decline, maybe that would have the effect of freeing up some supply and, and then the, uh, the, rate of, uh, the rate of housing price increases might moderate somewhat. Yeah, although we'll see what higher for longer, what effect that has on mortgage yeah, rates exactly, specifically. Craig exactly. Lazara, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.